Hi, everyone. Today on the podcast, we have James Carty, who is a writer, poet, and strategist. I actually met him through the Poetry Club, which is the online poetry community that I run. And he's been a wonderful, fabulous member, super talented. He writes a lot about mental and emotional health with a focus on kindness, connection, and self-acceptance. And his first book, Kind Words for Big Feelings, I love that title, comes out in June 2023. So I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today, James. I'm going to pass it over to you to talk a little bit more about you, about your book, anything you want to share. Thanks so much, Shelby. Really happy to be here. I'm absolutely loving this podcast so far. So it's wonderful to get to be a guest. And this, yeah, this is, I guess, kind of my first semi-official announcement about the book. So thank you for helping get the word out about that. A um, little bit about me. I've been writing for several years, but it's been more recent for me to be sharing and publishing the way that I have been. It's I think it's been a bit of an extension of like a lot of people in this space that I've talked with, where I would write for myself and I would journal. And then as I got more comfortable sharing that first with people close to me, and then with a bit of a broader circle, say Facebook friends, I, I just ha was having more positive interactions around that. Um, I went through this phase in the last year or two, I was living in a small little town on the Oregon coast um, a lot of close friends out there. And I got in this habit of just sharing poems with uh, nature photos that I had taken of the area. Mm. And I walk around town and people would stop me and say, oh my goodness, I loved that poem that you shared the other day. And I started thinking, whoa. So just even by sharing other people's work in a lot of cases, not even just mine, I was, I was getting these kind of reactions and making these connections. So as I've leaned more into the sharing, it's helped me understand how powerful it is to connect with people through words like this. I love that. That's amazing. From writer to writer, did you find it scarier to share your work with like strangers online or with people that you knew in person? Just curious. That's such a good question. I think the nature of the writing itself, it doesn't really make too big of a difference, but the one thing that does kind of stick out, and I actually just had a conversation with my friend Aaron about this the other day, because um, she's also a writer, it's it's that feeling of like when I share something that sounds like it might be really vulnerable, how will people close to me take it? Will they think like if I share something about grief, if I share a poem like I just did the other day, if I share a poem that somebody wrote about grief, will the people close to me assume, oh, James is grieving something mm -hmm. right now? Because you don't know. Sometimes, you know, as a writer, you are sharing something because you're going through something very personal. Right. Um, and other times you're sharing something because it's something that you've been through before and you've had a conversation with maybe somebody close to you and you shared something like this with them. And now you're thinking, oh, okay, well, I want to share this with more people and help them too. So I think it's that little bit of vulnerability there of not knowing if somebody's going to read into something I share in a way where they think that it's indicative of my, my personal feelings at a particular moment in time. And sometimes it is. And sometimes I do appreciate when people reach out. Right. That's so true. I used to give disclaimers on some of my posts. If it was like a poem that I wrote a couple of years ago, I used to be like, mm -hmm. it's not anymore. Like I'm fine. <laughs> and yeah. used to do these things that we shouldn't have to do. It's very nice when people are concerned, but yeah, sometimes we can just relate to something or resonate with something and want to share it. And other times maybe it is something that we're going through at that moment, but that's a really exactly. interesting point. So tell us a little bit how you got started writing about these topics and why these topics like kindness, compassion, self-acceptance are so important to you. Great question, Shelby. Well, self-compassion is something that I started diving into about two years ago. I was going through a divorce at the time and coming back home to myself, regrounding and, and making choices as to what I wanted to experience in life while I was going through some really difficult, deep emotions and a lot of healing. And I came across the work of uh, Dr. Kristen Neff, who her specialization is self-compassion. Mm. And I realized by going through her work, just how impactful self-compassion and similarly self-acceptance was to me, because I had gone through a lot of my life thinking that the way to motivate myself to show up and to get things done was uh, essentially by beating myself up all the time. Um, and it turns out um, from reading her work that I realized maybe if I were kind to myself, and I would not only feel better, but maybe I would still get a lot of good stuff done. Because as I was learning to be more aware and accountable with myself, I couldn't help but acknowledge like, hey, this whole beating myself up thing, not actually really working. 
Yeah. Um, so learning to be more compassionate with myself was really important and it unlocked these portals to kindness and self-love and connection. As I've explored more in my writing and in my sharing and my talking with people around this, I feel like self-acceptance is the underpinning of so much of this because I've been coming to look at this exploration and this work through a similar portal through which like I look at relationships because mm -hmm. in you know relational psychology or just basic thinking like you think well like if I'm going to love somebody like before I can really love somebody I need to accept them for who they are and mm -hmm. I need to feel like I can trust them because without acceptance and trust and kindness what kind of love do you really have but I think that's true about self-love too yeah and I, I love that. that as we learn to love ourselves better it's really important that we're learning to do that on a foundation of really accepting ourselves and being kind to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And from there, we can reach out and we can make connections with other people too. I love that. That's beautiful. I'm curious, did you have a hard time tapping into these emotions, especially with kind of the male stigma um, of not really expressing emotions as much? Was it something that comes naturally to you in writing these types of poems? I think in a way it's something that's really natural to me, or at least it's become natural the more that I've leaned into the vulnerable, sensitive parts of myself. Um, I, I identify as somebody who is very sensitive and has a lot of big feelings mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Um, and it's part of my journey to process those and to continue healing, but also showing up as myself because I don't want to be somebody who feels like they need to shut down their feelings in order mm -hmm. to fit in, in order to confirm certain stereotypes about gender or or anything else. Yeah. Um, but I, I do really appreciate that I have this opportunity as a man to be able to step into this mental and emotional help space in writing and in social media that is, you know, I, I think by and large, um, you know, not dominated with a lot of men because it seems like a lot of the men in this space are more just kind of writing about dating and relationships and love mm -hmm. which is great there's plenty of space for that too but yeah. I feel like the more that I write and the more that I share and the more I connect I feel like I found my voice and I I feel like I found my audience and I'm, I'm really grateful because I think that it takes some people a lot longer than it took me in my writing to figure out who they are and what they need to say and and who, right. they, who they say it to right I love that. That's amazing that you have found that. I feel like it definitely took me some time to, to, and I'm sure that we both have a lot more growing to do and a lot more topics to explore, but oh, just yes. finding our voice, you know, and feeling confident in what we're sharing with the world is amazing. So I'm glad that you've, you found that in your work. Yeah. Um, speaking of your work and your poems, we would love to hear if you would don't mind sharing a poem. I love having, you know, guests read a poem and then maybe talk a little bit about what this particular poem that you've chosen means to you and what you would want to readers to take away from your work. Sure, absolutely. Um, so this first poem that I'm going to read, uh, it doesn't exactly have a title, but sort of a tentative title. It's called Heavy Heart. Okay. Um, and here we go. When your heart feels heavy with the weight of life's levy and you can't seem to let it go, stop, breathe, remember what you know. You've weathered storms before when you felt tethered to pain and despair. No need to compare as no two hurts are quite the same, but it can help to adjust the frame. Feel the waves washing over you without them squashing your hopes and dreams and joys. Cry, scream, make all the noise, recalling that the tide will recede and the thick fog will heed the late morning sun and clear calmer, brighter days are near. Beautiful. I love hearing poets read. Once I've read, I've seen that one on Instagram. I love hearing the poet read it as it was intended to be read. It flows so beautiful, so beautifully. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Shelby. Yeah, that is, that is a special one for me. I wrote it while I was going through what felt like a challenging season in my life. And I find it helpful to write my way through some of those challenging seasons sometimes and being able to reflect and to share it with other people who are going through uh, their own things. It just makes everything easier. I know one of the things that um, you said before in some of your writing and how you talk about your work is 
um, that it's about helping people feel less alone. And that sometimes when we're dealing with big feelings, particularly difficult ones, they have this way of making us feel incredibly alone. Like we're the only people who have ever lost a job or gone through a breakup or lost a, lost a close friend. Yeah. Um, and I feel like part of you know my self-acceptance journey and how I'm sharing from that is accepting that these things are hard and also that we're not alone and we can seek connection. And I, I think something else that I'm continuing to explore in my writing is that, especially those of us with big feelings, we have the capacity to hold different feelings at the same time. We can feel joyful and incredibly sad. And those moments can be right next to each other. They can be at the same time. Yeah. And I think many of us have been taught to feel like everything just has to be black and white, that mm -hmm. you can't miss somebody or grieve a relationship and also open yourself up to love and joy in your life at the same time that it has to be one or the other, for instance. Um, and that's just simply not true. And so I'm I'm looking to help people and myself through all of this find more nuance. Absolutely. That's beautiful, very powerful. And that poem definitely, I think, makes people feel less alone. It definitely made me feel that way. So thank you for sharing. Glad to hear that. Yeah. So as this is a podcast about self-love, we kind of already tapped into self-love a little bit, but are there any specific ways that you show yourself kindness and compassion and either to yourself or to others, how can all of that kind of help us on our self-love journey? Part of it for me, Shelby, has been trying a bunch of different things over the years, different techniques, journaling, grounding, alone time, time with people. I'm um, just to kind of see what helps me feel like me. Um, mm -hmm. I have a couple different sort of like little litmus tests that I use. One is like if I'm thinking about doing something out of a sense of like feeling more like myself or feeling more loving, I, I kind of ask myself like this, does this make me feel bigger or does it make me feel smaller? Mm. Um, that's a question that I try to pass like different little opportunities through to see if it helps me feel bigger and closer to myself or smaller and further away from myself. So I try to ask myself that question because I don't always know in the moment what I'm going to need. Sometimes I sit down to watch a TV show and I think this is just what I need. And then five minutes in, I am distracted or I'm crying or I need to journal or I need to go for a walk. And I just guessed wrong. And that that's that's okay. So I think giving myself the space to not always know what I need counterintuitively is one of the ways that I, I really um, do a good job taking care of myself. Yeah. Um, one thing that I do come back to a lot though is, is stillness, is just kind of giving myself space away, you know, put that phone in the other room, put it on do not disturb. My phone lives on do not disturb most of the time, actually. Good. Because when I'm able to just carve out a little bit of space for myself to just be quiet, things start to feel more loving and more yeah. relaxing. I'm able to figure out what I need. I think, you know, maybe for, maybe this is something you resonate with too. Like as I spend more time on social media, sharing my work and connecting with other writers, it's easy to go too far and to go down that social media addiction rabbit hole, which yes. uh, can be a really dark place sometimes. And even when you're surrounding yourself by things that are filled with love and light and caring, um, it can still be something that pulls you away from yourself a little bit. So I'm trying to make sure I, I am coming home enough. Yes, I love that. And you just made me think of every week I give a small step to my audience. I'm sure you've heard in past episodes. So maybe this week is like, put your phone on do not disturb for a few hours, maybe a day, maybe a whole day for people who are really in that social media and take some time, take some stillness for yourself. I love what you said about that. So I think that's a really great goal for those of us listening this week to do. Yeah. Put the phone down, snuggle a dog, snuggle a cat, snuggle a mm -hmm. kid, snuggle a special person in your life. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so you write about self-acceptance often. What is a way that has helped you on your path to self-acceptance that you could share with our listeners? I'd say journaling, honestly, has mm -hmm. been one of the things that's helped me the most because it helps me get thoughts out of my head. Um, I found that as, again, somebody with big feelings, that sometimes those feelings can just get stuck up in my psyche and just float around in my brain, rattle around, get a little bit of sludge on the inside of my skull. But when I when I journal and I get it out, and sometimes that's written journaling, and sometimes, honestly, it's just leaving a bunch of audio notes for myself that I'll probably never listen to, but Ooh. that like as long as they're like out of my head, I kind of know like, okay, this is accounted for, and it's recorded somewhere for posterity, and therefore like I'm accepting it as a thought or a feeling that I have. 
and I'm not like just throwing it in the garbage or something. I know yeah. some people find it really valuable to do like a journaling exercise where they like write down all their thoughts or their feelings on a piece of paper. And then they just throw that piece of paper in the garbage because they're just like purging it. And yeah. I've done that before, but I find it more helpful to get it out of my head in a way where if I ever do come back to it, and I'm probably not going to, but it's like, I know that it's preserved and it's accounted for like somewhere. So like, I don't feel like I need to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. And by practicing letting go in this way, it helps me let go in other areas of my life, letting go of old jobs or old relationships or old communities. And for me, I've been learning coming back to the original question that like letting go of what's no longer for me and self-acceptance are two things that go hand in hand because I feel like for me, one of the impediments to self-acceptance is a holding on to things that are, are meant to pass through me rather than to stay. Wow. And wow. that reminds me that like, I'm, you know, accepting myself and I'm enough and I'm worthy just as I am. And I don't need to hold on to things that aren't meant to stay right now. Beautiful. Wow. I love that. I also definitely turn to journaling a lot for similar reasons. So anyone listening, if you feel like that could be something that could benefit you or the audio note thing, I always say, if you don't like writing, that's not really your jam, like talking to your phone, like let it out. It's so healing and so powerful. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Oh, yeah. Audio notes while walking, by the way, are something mm. that I've discovered lately. And oh my goodness, do I like those? Yeah. That's awesome. I sometimes do that. If I come up with like an idea for a poem or something while I'm walking, I'll do that. But especially just using it as a way to just kind of talk to yourself and let things go, let things out. Wonderful. Yeah. And most people walking by just assume I'm just talking to a friend about whatever yeah. problem I'm going through in my life. So it's great. I just, I'm always talking to a helpful friend. They <laughs> may be my journal. They may be an actual friend. Who knows? Yeah. That's so true. So true. Wonderful. Well, I'd love to kind of wrap us up with another poem from you. If you have another poem that you'd like to share with us and talk a little bit about what that one means to you. I do. I got one more here and it's Perfect. Um, say a, a little bit of an introduction to um, me and, and my work and people who might resonate with it. Here we go. You, yes, you from the land of big feelings plunked down into this unfamiliar place, clutter and clamor, wholeness and healings swirling swept up in an unceasing chase whose beginning lies beyond your recall be still and remember you're big not small oh i love that wonderful and this poem came to me uh, several weeks ago is after i have been on a bit of a flurry on social media lately of doing a lot of uh, both sharing writing and, and spoken word readings and yeah so I've been gathering a better understanding of who resonates with my work and people have just been showing up and it's been wonderful. Um, I've been coming to a better understanding of what we all have in common. And like I've been saying, it's, it's you know, being people who have big feelings and are learning to, uh, to process them, to accept themselves. And I, this poem came to me as something of an invitation uh, yeah. to people, a portal by which people can, people can arrive here in this space. I love that. I love the phrase big feelings. It makes me happy. It's like almost just a reminder that it's okay to feel. It's okay to have all these big feelings and express them and feel them. And I'm just, I'm so excited about the, the book title. I love it so much. I think it perfectly encapsulates you and your work. It's wonderful. So where can people find you if they want to hear your spoken word poems that you've been sharing or read your other poems? Where can we find you? Yeah, absolutely. I am most notably on Instagram, where my handle is James Kerti. That's K E R T I. Um, I'm also on TikTok under the same handle. And if you look me up um, there or at my website, jameskerti.com, you can also get on a mailing list that I'm putting together uh, where I'll be sending out little things here and there. Yay, and exciting. My book is coming out next June, June 2023. That's kind words for big feelings. Lots of good stuff coming on the way there. Amazing. I'm so excited. I'll have all the links and things in the description as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, James. This was wonderful. So many lovely quotes about self-compassion and kindness and acceptance for yourself that I hope our readers or our listeners will take with us this week. Thank you again for being here. I hope so too. Thanks so much for having me on. Mm -hmm.